What's up, fight fans? This is Roy Cochlin in association with SA Boxing Talk. And today we're joined by super bantamweight, the troublemaker, Michael Ramabaleta. Hey, Michael, how you doing? How you doing, my brother? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Excellent, excellent. So as this is your first SA Boxing Talk interview, um, can you please introduce yourself to those at home that may not know you? All right. Yeah, uh, this is Michael Ramabeleza, actually. Uh, I'm from South Africa, Togoza, Alwatin. Uh, I started boxing from since I was young. Uh, I, most, most, uh, I was saying, most boxers knows me unless the one that just turned prone recently. Uh, I've been boxing in South Africa, I, the, my amateurs and everything. I've done it in South Africa most of the time, unless... Uh, what did I say? Yeah, I'm from South Africa, Togoza, Albertine, and uh, the current English champion, Michael Romabelli, is a troublemaker. I love it. I love it. Okay, so basically, you started your career in Bloom and you, you fought all over South Africa, um, but you haven't fought at home since 2010. Um, how, how did you find yourself in the UK? Uh, you know what? The UK is great. Actually, but first time when I come in, it was a little bit hard. It, it was a lot of challenges that I faced, uh, which is, I was not expecting it, you know. So, yeah, it, UK, it was, it, it's not easy as people think it's tough. But you have to, you have to, you have to know why you're here. Uh, as long as you know you're here for a good reason, and then it, you, you'll manage to go through it. Awesome. So, so who would you say? I mean, you've you've shared the ring with some serious operators, the likes of Martin Ward, Kyle Yafai, Paul Butler, and more recently Chris Burke. And um, who, who's been your toughest opponent to date? Uh, on those fights that you just mentioned, uh, I wouldn't say there's, there were any tough fight actually. Why the reason being, uh, Paul Butler. Kaliafai and Martin Ward is the fight that I, I've been taking in the short notice, which is probably I've been taking them on like four days notice, a week notice. Uh, you know, when 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 I come to South Africa, it was a little bit difficult because I was I was giving the fight in the short notice, not ready. And I think maybe by that time they had the mentality of I'm just taking the fight just to make money, not to win. But I never had that mentality. So whether you, you get to finish the fight on points, it was hard for me to win. So, yeah, on those fights, there was not any hard, hard fights. So with Chris Bok, uh, it, was, it, it was not even a hard fight for me anyway, to be honest. Yeah, it, just, it just that I, I had a lot going on. I had a lot going on on that fight, like a couple of weeks before the fight which is uh, if it was someone else would pull out, but because of the opportunity came and I couldn't, I couldn't able to pull, pull out the, out of the show. It was um, absolutely, I went hell of, hell of a hard time, but hey, you know how it is. Uh, I've, I've tried my best and I was 100% confident that I'm going to win the fight, not even on points, but I was going to stop the kid. But it is what it is, what happened on that night. Okay. And, um, I mean, as of 2018, you made history by becoming English Super uh, Bantamweight Champion. How did that feel? You know, it was amazing to, to become uh, English Super Bantam Champion after a long time. You know, it was amazing that shows that as long as you don't give up in life and uh, you still believe in yourself and work hard, nothing can stop you to achieve it. So... When I achieved and became a national champion, it was amazing. It was amazing. And, um, you know, you've also won the central area title uh, at Super Featherweight. So, you know, what's it like for you fighting two divisions higher? Actually, it, it's good. It's good. But in the super, super Featherweight, I had to take the fight because I was not getting fights, actually. Uh which is I've got the fight. I think I, I've, they give me two weeks notice for the fight, but because I'm always in the gym and I didn't have to drop too much weight to get down. And I, I watched the kid, how he boxed. He's a, he, he was a good kid. And, but I knew that 
my experience you'll never you'll never beat me he cannot win again so i took the fight and i won the title on that time because i i haven't defend my title by that time i haven't defend my title for even once so there were so many so many boxers would be pulling out on the title so i had to take the fight and then just to keep myself busy on it sure and i mean between super bantamweight and super featherweight like you know, are you more comfortable campaigning at Super Bantam or would you ever make a run at Featherweight potentially? Yeah, oh, Super super Bantam and Featherweight, they are definitely can box on Featherweight, 100%, uh, which is if the opportunity comes on Featherweight, we'll definitely take that opportunity. All right. And then I think you mentioned that a lot of, I mean, you, as I said, your resume speaks for itself. You've been in with some some really good fighters and as you said you've taken those fights on short notice so you proved to those guys that you're a very good fighter what what type of advice would you give to other boxers who are in the position where they need to take fights on a short notice just uh stay ready be always in the gym and the main thing is just surround yourself with the good people because is it's it's hard when you work with people you don't trust what they're thinking and you know because we in the business that sometimes you can work with people just be, to make money out of you so you just be in the gym stay focused the best is to be around who be around the people who're gonna look after you for sure that's good advice and and I think um, just moving on to kind of you as a South African, um, but how do you feel, um, you know, fighting in the UK? I mean, are you received well by the UK fans? Yeah, you know, I've got a lot of fans in the UK that I'm getting from home, you know, because I'm getting a lot of fans in, in the UK. I've, I've built everything in the UK. So I'm, I'm more comfortable, you know, I've got I'm absolutely amazing people who are supporting me. So... Uh, at the minute, everything is easy for me because the connections that I made uh, through my career, it's, it's, it's awesome. Okay. And then also, like, you know, speaking of South African boxing, I mean, the South African boxing scene, were you keeping an eye on that? And, like, what are your thoughts on what's happening back home? Yeah, 100%. You know, because my dream is to fight in South Africa. Uh, hopefully this year I'll get two fights in South Africa. And uh, and uh, TLB is a TLB boxing promotion. Yeah. Uh, uh, my sister is she's the promoter of that. Uh, she's Joyce. So hopefully, hopefully, I'll get to fight in South Africa. My my plans actually this year. This year, there's a there's a huge huge plans that they will happen. Amazing, because I was gonna ask you if you ever wanted to to fight back home in South Africa, and clearly you do. I suppose the next question is, is there anyone you'd like to fight? <laughs> definitely, I like the question. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I would definitely, this is this is something, it sounds crazy. I would like this, uh, Lutu Mulamati. I 100% I would be happy to fight the kid. He's a good, he's a good boxer. Uh, skill, I mean, I would definitely, having that fight, just to, it will be a huge fight in South Africa, actually. You know, uh, I would definitely love to fight Lito Molomati. If not, I would like to fight, uh, what's his name? He's a South African champion, I think. It's a good kid who's coming up uh, from Eastern Cape as well, but he's training with uh, Smith. Ayabonga uh, Sanchika or? Yeah, Sanchika, yeah, Sanchika, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I also like to fight Sanchika because he's a champion. He's, you know, he's he's a good boxer. So I really want to fight the champions, which is I know will be a it'll be a good fight. We we'll definitely definitely will be a good fight because uh, the my intention is just to show the the young upcoming boxers that in life never ever doubt yourself as long as you look after yourself and you work hard, nothing will stop you to achieve anything. That's very wise words and really good advice. I mean, I, I think um, those are definitely fights, I'm sure, that can be made, but it, it, there's just getting around the pandemic, uh, which was another question I wanted to ask you was, you know, it's obviously you suffered uh, 
you know, a postponement in your last fight? Um, and uh, how, how has it been, you know, during these weird and, and strange times? And how uh, has it affected you and your training? It's uh, it been tough. It's been tough. Obviously, <laughs> it was hard because uh, we are not training as normal as we used to. Uh, it was it was it was absolutely hard because I was also I had COVID before when he started actually. Okay. And, uh, and it, <laughs> yeah, when he started in March last year, and uh, definitely I was I was ill. I nearly 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 probably I don't know I nearly died probably. But <laughs> yeah. it's great. Yeah. And then when I'm preparing my fight, still we are just under lockdown. The training was not good with the sparring. We don't hardly to get the sparring, you know, all this testing before sparring. People were scared to spar because of the this whole pandemic going around. So yeah, it was tough. It was hard, but we had to just to go through it. Yeah, and I mean, it's uh, it's 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 interesting. You you speak about sparring, and if it's tough to even get sparring, then it must be even tougher because there aren't that many fights. So when you are getting a fight, it's as if you haven't prepared like pre-pandemic stages. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, most books, they, they were not even training for under pandemic. So it's hard for you for them to come and give you a sparring where they're not ready. So And also they were thinking, hey, you never know. What if he got a COVID? And, uh, you know, I'll go home, get all this give it to my family. So it was it was tough. It was all questions. People were asking themselves questions, but now at least we start to get used to it and we know how to survive. So sure. yeah, it definitely looks like it's turning around. I mean, the shows are starting to happen more frequently, both in South Africa and in the UK. So hopefully we can see yeah. you on the scene very soon. So if not in South Africa, is there any kind of potential fights that you could get in the UK? In the UK, actually, there is a fight that uh i've been promised a fight which is i won't mention the name but it, it's going to be under cut of uh anton joshua and tyson fury that'll be incredible so, yeah so that fight hopefully will happen we're still waiting for for the fight to be to be announced and you know as soon as we know when when is the fight for Ant, uh, anton joshua and fury then we will be announcing the undercard maybe a couple of weeks afterwards. So yeah, there is a fight that I'm gonna get. I'll be fighting on the card of uh, Tyson Tyson Vera and Anton Joshua. Amazing. So we'll definitely keep in touch and keep you know keep the momentum going and try get some exposure for you before the fight. Um, you know we can have a few more interviews. Um, but anyways, I think thank you very much for the time, Michael. Is there anyone that you'd like to say thank you to or send a shout out to? Uh, you know, I'd like to say thanks to all my sponsors. You know, without my sponsors, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. And all the supporters, people who've been coming behind me and support me, uh, as well as my, my manager, my trainer, uh back home i want to say thanks to my my sister uh joyce little uh people i'm talking behind the scene actually uh they know themselves so i want to say thanks for the advice and you know the support i'm getting from and the whole south african whoever will support me thank you guys i really appreciate you and uh, the troublemaker will keep working and you know we'll, we'll, we'll keep pushing Excellent. Well, hopefully. awesome. Yeah, Thank you so much, Michael. No problem. Hopefully this year we'll get the big fights. And I'm looking forward to get a fight in South Africa, which is, I'm thinking I will get two fights in South Africa. So one, it will be just a normal fight in South Africa and the title fight to come in around September. So definitely that will happen. So I'm, 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 I'm thinking... Let me get a few wins. Hopefully, we'll get uh, Lodi Mulamati because he's got a big fight coming anyway. So, it will be, will be a huge fight in, in Kipton Park. At, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and what's it, what, what is promoter? Uh, Golden, Golden Club. Club. Golden, Golden Club promotion. I hope, I hope they can make that fight happen. And if it was to happen, would you have any, uh, or, you know, would you have any message for, uh, for Lodumo? 
No, I would just, uh, you know, because, I mean, he can't say anything. At the minute, he's focusing on his fight. I don't know if he ever he already had got an opponent. So I would say keep working hard, champ, and I hope maybe one day we can meet and just show all the fans in South Africa what we can do. Yeah.